the report played a pretty significant role in our decision to purchase the house. The floors are out, the ceilings out, the walls are out, everything's out. Yeah. We head to the basement and it's like disaster. Pull up the electrical, pull up the HVAC. Everything is wrong with the house. It was even worse than I thought. That really sucks. Jeff and Josette bought a new house. Now, the home inspector looked at it and said, saggy floors, it's an older home. You know, the doors are crooked, they don't close properly. You know, it's an older home, so it's standard. The two of them thought it was nothing they couldn't handle because the report really said minor issues. There's nothing really wrong with the house. I'm going to come in, I'm going to do a thorough inspection, and I'm going to see why those floors are sagging. Jeff and I had been living in a loft, and uh, while it was a nice big open space, it was only one room. So we decided to start looking to, uh, to buy a house. And as soon as we walked into this house, we fell in love with the open concept. It was a gorgeous space, and it sort of continued the loft feel. It's not a particularly large house, but the way the main floor is set up gives it a, a sort of larger feel because the, um, the structure's been modified to the extent where the dividing walls have been removed um, and opened up the entire space. I thought the kitchen was, was a gorgeous space, uh, very modern. It also had a finished basement, which was an uh, attractive feature for us. Also, the backyard was very lush. It's a deep lot, so it, it would make for a nice backyard once, once we got to that stage. The home seller had arranged for a home inspection. So when I came to look at the house the first time, the binder was available for everyone to see. So I spent a lot of time reading through the home inspection report. You know, and it was looking for the same thing that everyone else looks for. There's uh, electrical issues in that uh, most of the house had been redone and removed the knob and tube wiring, but there were still a few rooms on the second level that had it. You know, it mentioned that the backyard uh, has a deck that needs to be redone, so that was well known going into it. But it did mention that there was moisture, I believe, uh, in the basement. But other than that, it seemed like a pretty clean report. Josie. Josette. Josette. I'm uh, Mike. Nice to meet nice you. To Jeff. Meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come on in. We really, you know, based our, our decisions, very big decisions, on that information. And, uh, and we're really disappointed and surprised to find that there are issues um, that should have been addressed there uh, and weren't. And the main problem here is that we have sloping floors. That's it. So one of the things, sort of top of the list, we wanted to do when we moved into the place was redo the upstairs bathroom. We would called in a contractor to come and have a look at the space and talk with us about a few ideas. And honestly, within, uh, within five minutes, uh, being in the house, he mentioned that redoing the bathroom was not a good idea until we took care of the structural issues. And he said, well, obviously someone's done some renos here. This is an older house. There used to be some walls and they're all gone. The second floor is sagging because the renovations that were done on the main floor here were not proper. We checked ahead. I have the uh, permitted drawings from 1989. So we did have a support right here. So the wall was about this big here. This was the main structure right here, picking up more than likely this beam here, and this one that comes across picking up here. Mm. So somebody, since that time, has pulled that wall out. Actually, that wall went down and across here. It's quite obvious that some renovations have been done, some structural modifications, and there were no comments regards to uh, the structural state of the house, if it was good, bad, uh, any issues that needed to be looked at, uh, the report was completely silent on that front. Wow, okay, this is like uh, really dropping. Yeah. The floor is actually dropped away from the wall, that's what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. On eight feet, it drops two inches. It is actually dropped away from the wall. So there's a bottom two by four plate right there. The floor is sunk down, so it's almost like they've disconnected or just disconnected itself through the structure change. Right. We do have structural issues. On this side, you can see what they've done. Oh, it's quite the drop here. They put up a piece of what appears to be a doorstop or something to hide, to conceal that side, and then put up a trim, right? So they try to hide the illusion that we have an issue. On the other side, they didn't do that. Look at this. Uh, it's huge. You know what? I want to take a quick look at the basement. Mm -hmm. See what they did with that. This, this house makes me a little nervous. You're making me nervous. Somebody's covered up something. I can tell you that much because I'm walking in going, something's wrong. Obviously, someone's done some renos here. This is an older house. There used to be some walls, and they're all gone. Upstairs, um, the, the floor is essentially sinking. In the kitchen, there's a bulkhead down. It does a couple of things. It creates a look that the kitchen's on its own, almost like the rest of the room is bolted up. More the reason is to run plumbing from the bathroom upstairs. Okay. Duck work, they're going to run everything in this path here. Mm -hmm. You know, if I open this up, we're going to show a whole world of stories. We can tell by looking at the cabinets right there that 
something's dropping. Is the cabinet all level? It's pretty obvious now. You can notice that there's okay. a big wedge. Yeah, absolutely. Outside. We're about one inch here. We're about an inch and three quarters on that side. <laughs> but when I see this, it, it does create a concern. We know it's going to drop. Everything drops to the center. It runs this way. It runs this way. It runs this way. Center, off center, because this is usually where the wall was, right in line with that beam, actually. Worst case scenario is, is we don't have proper structure point loads holding up load. I stand my arm up, I plant it on the ground, you can put a lot of weight on top of that. That's a point load, right? When these walls were removed, the beam itself should have been structurally supported at each end, directly down to foundation or footing. If not, we've got a big problem. You take out that point load, what the hell's holding it? We have a window in the back. What's on the other side of that window? Ground. It's a glass block wall, but three quarters of it are below grade. All right. Plywood floors, can I like this? Well, there's no load bearing here. You see the black on the wall there? Yep. What do you think that is? Don't mm. say mold. No, it's not mold. Tar? Yeah. What is tar supposed to be for? Uh, waterproofing. Where? On the outside. Correct. Not on the inside. It's full of chemicals that you're not supposed to be breathing on the inside of the house. We've got junction points galore here. So somebody's played with electrical. As far as I'm concerned, it's not passed. All I'm seeing is half the panel being used. Usually in a house like this that has this much electrical, every single breaker is used. Wow. I'm going to have to really go through this house and find out what's the most important thing here. And uh, I think you, at least your concern is that your floors are not level. I think you have a hell of a lot more things to worry about at this point that I'm really worried about. You know, anytime you want to know what your house used to look like, look at the house next door. There's a world of things. This is a great example. Front porch. Front porch. So this is how this house used to look like. Now, this front porch is part of the front living room. The wall has been brought out to the pillar, same as this pillar, in the front. So if we know the floor is approximately right here, what's under it? Look at this one. Okay, we have an old door. That opens outwards. What do we see here? That's wood. Wood is not supposed to touch ground. The only wood allowed to touch ground is pressure-treated wood. What happens when there's a lot of water in the driveway? It's going to get in the house. Old melt chute. Look next door. Look at the size of this window. Look at the size of this window. Now, there is a steel lintel here. I did take a look at that at the beginning. It is brought over. Okay, so they widen the window. Is it in the plans? The answer is no. This house has a whole lot of problems. Okay, so they take the line out to run the vent, air behind water, running down the drain. It runs right up and is cut nice and neat to the soffit. I can see the cut from here. If anything, being so tight to that soffit, it's actually like putting your hand over the top of the pipe and you're not getting air behind water, which may explain some of their slow drains that they're talking about. That's like a minor concern compared to some of the things that I've seen in this house. They've created a jet out. They've created a jet out. For whatever reason, everyone seems to want that closet on the outside of the house. No handrail. No fence rail. That's not in the report. Okay. Wood burning fireplace downstairs. Bring it out through the ground, which you can't do because this is really a wall of earth that is being pushed against this pipe. It literally goes into the ground. You can see it. It's not allowed to go on the ground. It must be a certain height off the ground. Well, in truth, everything is aesthetics when it comes to buying and selling. People will spend more time looking for clothes than searching a proper home. Chuck it out. I walk through here and I'm panicking. Why am I panicking? Because I have a terrible feeling. I have a feeling I'm going to be ripping this house apart because it's been done all wrong. If I had inspected it, look at I don't see a clean out on the plumbing. That's plumbing code. I need a clean out here because this is accessible. No permit, no permit, no permit, no permit. Don't buy the house. I do see a surface mold here. It's wet. And it is literally, it's full of mold. I'm going to be very gentle not to raise too much doing this. It's not terrible. It's more wet and staying wet than anything. Do you see the mold? Push the top of the table. 1989, it was a permit for to do all this open, all this up, so we can see how they beam the cross, and this is standard what we're used to seeing. But you know, when you see the bulkhead that comes down with the bathroom up directly above us here, and yeah. you see the, the filler strip, like why is this not that? You can see it from here. Yeah, why is this not level? This was the easiast thing to make level, so nobody went up and actually picked up the floor joist and leveled right. the house. I'm starting to assume that when they put up their temporary wall to hold the floor joist so they could do all this work, it dropped. But looking at the floor and being right from this side out, you know, yep. two and a half inches. Wow. Well, right I can here. actually feel it on my feet that you really want to fall this way and this way. The floor has dropped over two inches here. This has created a bowl effect, and that's exactly where the wall should have been downstairs. We're going to have to do some opening investigation about structure. So let's go back downstairs. I'll tell you what to open up. Okay. 
Let's start with the kitchen ceiling. I want to see how this structure is holding the floor. Okay. So Open up a channel in between the lights, as big as you can, okay? We want to see point loads. Okay. Open that up. We know there's a double in here. We know there's a hanger here. We know that somewhere in here there's a beam and there's probably a hanger here. We'll be able to see it from this side. What you can't see is from this side. We may have to open a hole, but don't panic. Don't go crazy and open up everything yet. I'm always going to find every spot I can, yeah. right? The C structure. <sighs> I see the panel. Right. So I'm seeing the three 30 double breakers in here plus the 40 for the stove, but I'm only seeing half the panel. Yeah. Yes. I want to report from Frank. I want to know how bad the electrical is. I want to know about all the pot lights. I want to know about the attic space. I want to know about that wood burning fireplace that's ducted that out back that I don't like that goes into the tree. That's right. I'm not gutting this place. So let's, let's look at I want to know about the structure. No, we're not gutting this. We can actually tell them, you know, in the future, you're going to have to save your money. You're going to have to gut the basement and redo the basement. But we do have to try and take care of what we can take care of where we're working. I don't know whether to say thank you, my friend. Not panic. No, no. I just said I think Damon's going to think I'm mad at him. In the last 16 months, we bought a house, got engaged, got married, and got pregnant. Yeah, action packed. So we're going to look at structure, we're going to look at insulation, and just take a look at everything else and give some recommendations. Give me theory, don't go crazy, don't All open. Right. Structure, I want to open. Yep. Okay. you got to really protect the house, protect the floors, protect the arts, protect everything you can, okay? So we'll start with that and we'll work our way towards construction. Everything looks really good. It's not. It's really deceiving. Upstairs, we have a bowl effect happening right at about this point right here. Now, looking at the original plans of the house... We knew that there was an L-shaped wall here that was a supporting wall supporting upstairs. 25, 30 years ago, someone changed the whole layout. They wanted open concept here. Okay, I'm going to put you guys each on a point load. You're going to open it up. I'm going to start working on the bulkheads, okay? So, Adam, let's open this one up here, okay? We see that the beam is right here coming this way. I want to see what's this way, okay? Kate, I'm going to get you to tackle that one. The same thing. Keep it six inches off each side of the corner. Just do a channel right down. So, again, 10 inches off, 10 inches off the ceiling. Just right down the middle. I just want to see where it's going, okay? You're going to be opening up this one over here, okay? Just go from corner beat, edge of corner beat to edge of corner beat. There's about a million ways to show an unlevel floor. I find the best way is right here. And there is your bowl. Okay, that door's a little sticky. Something tells me. Looks like everything dipped here as well. The dip is not as bad as it is by the bathroom and the other bedroom, but it is bad here. And that's why we get this. Now the whole door is sticking at the top because the jam has actually shifted towards the dip. That's what I have to fix. Right now we have our point loads open. I'd love to see that they used a metal beam in here. I want to see what the point load is showing me down below. That's kind of scary. Kate is now opening up that one over there. It's going to show me that point load there. Adam's opening up the one at the other end of this beam, which is right under the kitchen. This is the most important one. This is where the sag occurred, right above us. This is why I'm, I'm starting with this beam. It's going to show us a lot of what's happening upstairs. So I know it's strange to uh, start the plumbers outside, but this is where I think the troubles really begin. Nothing is draining properly in the house at all, guys. And I think this is why. This looks like a vent, and I'm assuming it's for the stack, and they have it plugged off at the soffit. No indication in the report anything about this pipe. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little curious to find out where, where that's going. The best approach would be to cut a piece of it, uh, run a video camera, okay, and I'll be able to find out exactly where it takes That would be me, fantastic. Right? And then okay. also I'll be able to determine how far it goes and where it terminates. Now there's a good possibility there's a, a bird nest there. So even if it is a vent, it, it absolutely is useless at this stage because it just it doesn't allow any, any air uh, to, to, uh, to circulate. I'll bring an electric snake. I'm going to try to uh, clear that uh, debris there and then run a video camera again to determine how far I can get and what actually this vent is, is, uh, is, is used for. Okay, a few things that I see in the panel that are a problem. When we took the panel cover off, there's a breaker spot that is still on and it's covering one of the breakers. This breaker will never trip. The ground here is in the wrong position. It's under with the neutral lug. It should be on its own up here on the uh, ground bar. Um, these staples up here are two under a staple, which is uh, not a good thing. All staples should be on their own. It gives it room to breathe in, uh, the wire to breathe, and there's no uh, pinching of the wires. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have to take a look. So the original inspector actually said that there's about an R32 up here. There's about an R20 up here at the most. The insulation, the pink insulation looks really good. 
Pick it up. Look underneath it. There's about two inches of insulation below that. It's not enough up here. You have full access seeing these skylights here. Talk about heat loss. No kidding. You have to properly insulate a skylight in order to keep the heat in your house. Otherwise, if you're just drywalling into an attic, think about the heat loss you're going to have. I just pulled a piece of insulation off of this. If this is exhausting from the bathroom, underneath a piece of insulation, what is that doing to your insulation? What is that doing to the, 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 the framing, the wood, the joists? It's rotting basically everything because you're drawing all that moisture and it's not ever making it outside. It's sitting in your attic. Inspection report stated they had some airflow issues here. What it didn't state is the reason why they had the issues. Um, these are one of the issues, these three runs sharing this one run, and there's no return airs on this first floor. The return air brings the air back to the furnace, which actually blows the air out of each supply vent. You don't have any return here. So you have no air going back to the furnace, therefore you've got no air blowing out into the room. We're on the back of the kitchen, um, and this vertical post actually comes down onto the rim plate. But there's nothing above this window. You can actually stick your fingers out. Have you put your fingers There's no lintel here? There's nothing. There's no there's structural lintel no, here. There's nothing. There's glass block, and that beam sits right on one single 2 by 6 I cannot believe that there's no signs that this has actually started shifting. No, there's no cracking here before we started opening it. Nothing. Oh, man. Oh, oh, more fun. Oh. Yeah. Junction box. Junction, Junction box. Ugh. Oh. we just found Oh, jeez. Someone told me that's wires. And... Yeah. What happens when this, when the electrical hits this? The whole thing Boom. Yeah. yeah. So we had Ethan in. Uh, engineer. He is obviously not happy. First of all, he thinks these are undersized. He's going to double check on that. He hates this connection, I which we both knew. He'd rather see a full bracket clip there as well as back there. He did not like that at all. He so, did not like that uh, connection custom steel bracket hangers? That Absolutely. Doing? Okay. This is sitting on the floor. It's not on structure. Just floating on the floor. There's nothing underneath that. That's really bad there. This is sitting on the end joist like we saw. We knew that. Below it is that blocked glass window with no lintel above oh, it. Oh, you got to be kidding me. There's no lintel. I can actually put my hands outside. You got The window is directly under this load. Directly under this load, and there's no lintel. That's just as bad as that location. Absolutely, and I can't believe we're not seeing signs of cracking in this house. I don't understand. Now that we've opened everything up, and you can take a clear look, you know, it's amazing what happens when we wow. open things. Steel beams. Let's first talk about steel beams. Sure. So we have a correct vertical column here. If you look over at this column here, the steel one, mm -hmm. it doesn't look in the same direction as this one. No. So we brought in an engineer, and he said, that one's wrong. Oh, my God. So once again, brings us back to the point, at least these two are over top of foundation walls. At least that's good. So we have proper point load, okay. proper installation of the point load. Okay. Right. So we know that this vertical beam is wrong. We know that the tie-ins are wrong. We know that this beam by the engineer is undersized. It is sitting right on the floor. There's nothing holding it. Worse, it gets worse. This tie-in is incorrect. This tie-in is incorrect. They removed the wall that used to be here holding this up. Right, right. When we come over to this side here... This one here is the vertical holding up the four quad here, the quad, I'll call it the quad beam. Sure. Okay, now this is now sitting over top of the window downstairs that has no lintel. Oh my God. There's way more. Come into the kitchen. Oh, man. Way more. We've just begun. Did you not notice we have electrical lines actually coming out of the stainless steel? I haven't actually spotted those before. The inspector should have caught this, that we have the lines coming out, drilled holes in the stainless steel, very sharp holes when it comes to stainless steel. Electrical mm -hmm. touching, metal touching, you touching is a very bad mix. Good thing oh, there's not man. a sink here. Look up and see the ductwork. That is one duct line that comes up from downstairs and branches off in three different locations. Mm -hmm. There are no air returns at all in your house. In the report, the home inspector said he poked his head through the attic. Mm -hmm. In the report, he says we want a minimum of 40R value. And he says there's about a 32R value in there, which there's not. No, there's probably 20 at the most, and I'm being generous. Not to mention that there's right in front of your eyes insulation missing on the columns of the skylines. It's incredible, the, the feeling of your stomach sinking right out from underneath you. When, when the news of how much is wrong with this place is thrown at you. It's incredible. So we've done a lot of damage to your house, and I'm sorry, but it's what we have to do when it comes to fixing things. So let's go back to visual. Right above us is the vertical 4x4s four four holding the point load, the biggest weight load. Yeah, what, yeah. what is beneath it? Nothing. nothing. There's nothing here. Nothing. A door. That is completely mind-blowing how anyone could ever imagine that that's an adequate way to support a structure. I know the panel is not even loaded, mm -hmm. and I know you've got a lot of electrical, which leads to tell me that we have issues with electrical to the point so much that you are overloaded on every single circuit in this house, and that's point of junction boxes throughout yeah, yeah. the house. And right here, Mike, before you go, got another junction box here, and if you can see here, it looks like we have asbestos wrap pipes. And we do. We have asbestos. So at one oh time we had rads in the house. So you do have asbestos in the house. You've got a kid on the way, don't you? Yeah. yeah. One, you don't want a kid coming into a house with asbestos. That's so. 
Let's go to the window. It's terrifying. I mean, we've been living here. I've been pregnant now for, you know, just under five months. So I've been living here in that state for five months. It's kind of scary. Structurally, again, that load is approximately right here. Okay, that yeah, is over top. Yeah. So it's over top of the window. If you were to put your hand in above that, you will feel no lintel whatsoever above this. Nor, once again, when I saw this, do we put a window underground. And it is astounding that that, that thing hasn't collapsed. Honestly, there's so much load over that area, and there's no lintel, and it's sitting on glass block. This has become opening up to verify. We see walls over there. We're, we're finding mold. Uh, we now found asbestos. We found plumbing problems. We found electrical nightmare, structural nightmare. There's asbestos. There's mold. There's everything Everything you can think of is wrong with the house. We've opened up a nightmare. We have to fix the nightmare the right way. Just to gut your whole house. Remove the mold. Remove the asbestos. Pull out the electrical. Pull out the HVAC. Pull out the plumbing. Pull out absolutely everything in this house, including you and your furniture. Redo the whole house at a cost of about three hundred thousand dollars it's it's hard to comprehend how many things are actually wrong with this place H how can it be that almost everything everything needs to get fixed it, it's unheard of we're in trouble this is incredible completely unexpected the type of house i don't want to walk into the type of house that i want to Man. say we can't fix this we can't fix this it's too much hmm. what's well, better take it out take it down and build a new one uh, almost that's what you're saying it's basically uh, going to be that at the end I'm saying. That's insane. You're an engineer, aren't you? True. What, yeah. do, what do you do? Uh, actually, you work in the wireless business. Wireless. Okay, yeah. that's good, because if you were an engineer in structure, I'd be giving you hell right now. <laughs> so would I. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think my parents are now going to be upset that we'll be living with them for a few months. So <laughs> that's how they're going to react. <laughs> Surprise, we're moving back in. All oh, these poor people. Well, we're here after the big decision was made to actually gut the house. We have the crew right now packing stuff up to move st all their furniture into a storage bin. Want to protect their furniture and get this place started. Lots of booze, lots of booze. Now, here's the ultimate reason we're doing a full gut on this basement. Not to mention the reason I have to get proper point loads down here, which brought us into the fact we found the mold. This is what Mike found on his first day by opening up this section right here. We know if it's moldy right here, because this is mold right here on the back of this drywall. That is a lot of mold. I'm going to have Pynchon Environmental come in and give me a proper air test. I am not disturbing anything else down here, because we know that we need professionals in when we're dealing with mold, so we don't make our guys sick. Unfortunately, this is asbestos. Now, I'm not actually going to touch it because when you disturb asbestos, that's when it becomes dangerous. I'll leave that in place, let them look at it. Hopefully, it's only in the basement. I doubt very much it runs off the outside walls. And they'll let me know. When you get to something like this, it's just easier just to rip everything out and start all over. It's going to be gutted anyway, so it's uh, not going to be a big deal. We're going to end up shutting down all the power to the house. It's just going to be easier for everyone else to work. We don't want anyone to get uh, shocked. Um, or, or get hurt uh, for that matter. So we're just going to be shutting down the power and giving, giving them temporary plugs. This line was actually blocked. Ooh. I should have just a water in the trap. This line from here up to all the way down to the basement should be empty. This indicates that uh, there's a blockage somewhere down below. Another good reason why we're removing and gutting everything. Just gives me, you know, a good chance to reroute everything properly. There's no way for me to get this kitchen countertop out of here, but I'm going to have to cut it in order to get it out. Okay. Yep, that's was their air return down here. Why is the furnace not expelling air? Try looking under your cabinet. We knew that there was a bit of asbestos on the pipes. I knew I was into a bit of a remediation at that point. What Pynchon has found is that we have asbestos within the plaster itself, and this is not something I was prepared for. The job stops as of right here. They remediate the whole damn house, getting rid of the asbestos and all the mold that's left in this house. Certain materials contain asbestos, and in homes, it's pretty much limited to plaster, possibly texture coat, pipe installations in old homes, maybe ceiling tiles, but they'd have to be very old, vinyl floor tiles, vinyl sheet flooring, and possibly drywall joint compound. Asbestos is a small fiber that takes a very long time to fall to the floor, so it can remain airborne a long time. And while it's airborne, you have a chance to inhale it. What it does is it lodges itself, for lack of a better word, in your lung. Your body will remove small particles, but asbestos is hazardous because it could be small enough that it can get down there, but large enough that your body can't clear it. What the contractor's doing by regulation here is using type 3 procedures, and what we do as the consulting firm and the inspection firm is we come and look at their enclosure as they set up to make sure that they've done the proper things to set it up. And that involves putting polyethylene on all surfaces so they don't get damaged from water because you need to spray water to suppress dust. They install a shower so the workers can shower when they leave and remove any asbestos off the person. They use negative air machines, which are a HEPA-filtered unit that sucks air within it, filters it, and sends it outside. And it keeps the home under a constant negative pressure. So if there's any air leakage, it's into the enclosure and not out. 
years ago, they were not heating the basements here, a lot of coal, uh, that kind of thing. So the pipes are insulated with uh, air cell type asbestos. And on the corners or elbows of the asbestos, they packed it and covered it all with canvas and lagging. What's happened is over the years, though, the canvas and lagging deteriorates and everything starts to fall apart and that's when it becomes a hazard. Having my mail sent here because we're going to be here for a while. First day back after mold remediation and asbestos remediation, I want this floor ripped up. I want interior walls down. I want the furnace disconnected and I want the perimeter dug up so the bones can actually start their internal waterproofing. So, Colin, I came down this morning. Right away, I looked at this wall because I was really worried about the amount of dirt. Like, the dirt up on this side of the house, her grade is basically halfway up where the fireplace is. Sure enough, I've got a significant bow in this wall. This brick is actually being pushed into this house right now. The lateral pressure, because the grade is about three feet above the floor joists in combination with that east drop system spilling over. Yep. Every season, we go through the freezing thaw. Whatever moisture is in that area, when it pushes, it's going to push on this wall right. and continually make it worse. Now, this has to be fixed. It's just a matter of time before this wall keeps it. Look at that. And I'm not even showing level yet. Yeah. That's level right there. So I'm, what, five inches off the wall? But that bowl is gotta be five, five inches now. I'll get the engineer in and we'll go from there, man. Okay. Right now we're starting the trenching process to install an internal weeping tile system. It's ultimately better to seal the foundation on the outside and not let any of the moisture at all transfer through the wall. Just we're limited in this case. It's a shared driveway. We don't have room to excavate. And on the other side, the house is right on the property line. So it's our only option to keep this basement dry is the internal system in this case. After the weeping tile system is installed, we're going to install a drainage board membrane on the inside of the foundation. It's not like it's pooling water or huge amounts of water are getting in at once. It's just slight moisture everywhere that's been transferring through. So when we install our membrane up the foundation, there's dimples on the membrane that are going to go towards the wall. And what that'll do is it'll allow this wall to eventually dry out. We had uh, an island on the main floor uh, with the island sink. I have my hot and cold coming up, and then I have my inch and a half drain, which is coming from uh, from the island. Yeah. That drain actually continues across to the side, goes over to the stack, yeah. but then it goes up. It goes back. It goes. It goes back up, and it ties into the stack with a little cheat of it. You've got to be joking. So remember when you guys were disconnecting the yeah. island? There was tons of water. Yeah. That water actually sits in that line because you it actually turns could, up. It turns up. Yeah. So so this entire pipe is filled with water that's been sitting and breaking down. It. it would have always had issues. It was it was based on just a difference in pressure, right? As as more water built up in the sink, yeah. on that island sink, it was. A the higher elevation, so it forced a little bit of that water to go down through the stack. But again, it's very good that the drywall's been removed, that we have access to the entire plumbing, because like it's it's uh the drywall's been removed. There's not a there's no wood left in this house, let alone drywall or plastic. I'm trying, I'm trying to put it uh, <laughs> in a puzzle spin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> had the engineer come in yesterday. What we're going to do is build a 10-inch block wall straight in front of this, keeping in mind the bow. So we're going to be in front of that bow, tying back into it. We're going to actually have to extend the footing below here. That means tying in rebar into the existing footing, making it one structure again, and preventing the bow from becoming more significant. Typically, a footing has to be twice as wide as the wall that's going to be built on it. We're going to be using 10-inch blocks, and in this case, what we've done is we've actually made the footing a little bit wider. This footing's going to be a total of 24 inches wide. Typically, the footing is going to be 8 inches thick, and again, in this case, we've made it a little thicker. We're at about 16 inches here for this footing, and we have 5 eighths of an inch rebar encased the whole way. This is the pudding that's going to carry the weight from the beams on the main floor that carry the rest of the house above it. So this is a very integral part of this build. This is the biggest pad I've ever poured in my life for a point load of this kind. It starts everything. It makes me very happy. Oh my god. It's a freaking disaster. Right now I have water pouring into my house. Double brick foundation water has been pouring against that probably since this house has been built. This has always been here. And now that, that has actually deteriorated the brick and the mortar. Now I have a river running into my freaking house. Like, look at that water just pouring out of there. That is an incredible amount of water. And brought right into your house. Temporary solution. Ooh. Shock. I'm in complete shock. I didn't expect. I knew that, you know, according to Mike, last time we saw him, this house should be condemned. And I didn't think he actually meant it. It's not the same house, is it? And here we are, you know, to the brick. And beyond that, like, this is our attic, exposed and complete and utter shock. 
Well, the concept up here, too. You like open concept? Uh, not this much. That's wow. kind of too much? Oh, my God. All right, let's start at the front of the house. A beautiful double brick construction. Bricks in really good shape until we get to areas like this. See this wonderful crack? Ah. I'm going to guess whoever renoed the downstairs didn't do something right and what's, it's not supported. What's holding this double brick construction, which is about this wide? I the think steel beam. That's it. So when they put that steel beam in place, they actually snap the center. It's like a little bit like watching a bad movie. Like, we used to live here. Like, our bed was right there. Now, like, there's nothing. There's a cracked brick wall. Like, it just doesn't feel real. It doesn't... It's our home, but it doesn't feel like we lived here. Everything's destroyed. So let's look at this jut out for a second. That's the original. See the plank boards that run out? Okay. This was the closet for this bedroom. That's why they did a jut out. Now, very strange jut out, but look at the shape of it. There is minor mold that is there, but we did have the abatement guys that came in. Oh, by the way, did you know that your whole house was asbestos? No. No. Yeah, it was at every floor. I mean, your ceilings, walls, everywhere. So this was a super bring the, the team in. And we were going to start with renovations, too. We were going to do our bathroom. Being pregnant during this process, um, twofold. One, I would love to be living in my house during this, you know, emotional time and happy time. But two, it's a blessing in disguise. I don't want to be living in a house full of asbestos and, and mold. Uh, let's go to your old kitchen first. Yeah. Remember that was? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Looks a lot smaller now. All right, let's get into structure. They notched this beam because the floor sank down. They put this in place totally on a downright angle to tie into this beam. This beam is not even touching the floor joists. Totally wow. incorrect anchors. I mean, I can't say enough about this. Totally incorrect tying on the beam here. We're going to get a temporary support in here. And look at how it's not even holding the floor joist here. Let's look at the brick. Is that kind of overhanging the beam? Yeah. The brick is wider than the beam. Correct. That's the structural issue. Okay. Look how they, they supported the roof. That two by four in the beam. This is not the way to structure all this. No. No. Let's go further. Oh. We think they went right over the old porch. I now got to pull this. And here's my biggest fear. Now, I don't know why I got to fix all this. I think I got to take your whole porch down drop the window, remove everything, and redo it. Oh. The whole thing. This has been one heck of a lot of work in your basement, which would say why we haven't done so much upstairs yet. One of my biggest fears uh, was messing with that wall. That wall is bowed five inches in the center. That means it does this. That wall is about to cave in. Oh, yeah. We have cut the floor and put in massive footings. We are going to now cinder block it up. We are going to anchor it into the floor. We're going to anchor it into the upper floor of the first floor. We are going to backfill with concrete in behind the wall. So we're creating a structural wall to hold the house and a benching system in behind it to hold that wall from coming in. This whole thing started with a bit of a structural issue with the beam uh, on the main floor. And now what sounds like an even bigger structural issue to me is the basement wall potentially on the verge of collapsing. Mike said, you know, it's, it's not a matter of if, it's just when. The amount of water that was pouring in this basement today alone, this was a perfect day to actually see the water coming in here. The yeah, downspouts yeah. going into your corners of your house mm -hmm. was actually leaching water, so much water in here, it was a river of water in here. That's why there was that much mold in here. This was saturated in mold down here. They've already dug around the hole outside and put in an interior weeping system. We're going to control it from the inside. When we're done, we're going to stud it, we're going to spray foam it, and everything's going to work the way we want it to. We seal in the, the chemicals around that wall from all the black roller crap they put on that should have yeah, been outside. Yeah. We're going to structurally support this wall on the outside, which is just a massive scare at this point, especially because we got to dig footings. We're going even deeper. Wow. It's done. It's poured. We're safe. We're in the middle of this, and there's so many things wrong and so many things that need to get fixed that it's just... Yeah, it's just really difficult to deal with. I'm sure you're going to have to wait just a little longer. It's going to take us a while. Yeah. And I will do this as fast as we can, but at the right pace. Okay? That's fine. It's, it's sad. And we're angry, too. I mean, who do we direct our anger at? I don't know. The contractor? Yes. The home inspector? Yes. Ourselves? Probably a little bit. I mean, yeah. do I regret buying this house? Yes. I know I would have told you to run. You mentioned that the first time we met. I told you to run. In hindsight, you know, we would have been in front of you. We would have beat you to the curb to get away from this house. Okay. They did the plumbing wrong. They did the electrical wrong. They did the structure wrong. They did everything wrong. Look at the brick wall. It's coming Oh, in. you're right. It is. Uh... We kept hearing about problems over and over again, like new problems that kept happening. I think i got to take your whole porch down, remove everything, and redo it. Never could have envisioned anything of this magnitude having to be done to the place. It's about the house. The house was wrong. We had to make it right. Oh, wow. Oh, it's beautiful. Go! <laughs> What I did was I was standing on, on this line here, and it wasn't stuck to the ground properly. It was a hard damage. Okay, 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 Carl. Very good. Somebody wants to go home.